just outside the limits of Fayetteville, Arkansas, a location that has long held the interest of paranormal investigators eagerly awaits anyone brave enough to visit. Known to locals as Ghost Mountain, this location is marred by not one, but a multitude of varying misfortunes. The sufferers of these events are allegedly unable to move on, and their anguish has culminated in producing a widespread hotbed of paranormal activity. Much like the city itself, which was the site of Prairie Grove Battlefield, one of the nation's bloodiest confrontations, and led to over 2,500 soldiers dying in one day, with more succumbing to grievous injuries thereafter, Ghost Mountain is no stranger to tragedy. Ghost Mountain's ghastly narrative opens at the start of the 1930s in a log cabin situated at the top of the hill. It belonged to a young couple who had just welcomed their first child. This should have been a happy time, but the husband spent the days working and the nights drinking himself into a stupor while his wife tended to their colicky newborn. On one fateful night, the woman simply could not quiet her crying child no matter how hard she tried. The man grew progressively angrier as he lay awake listening to the shrill screams until he decided he had had enough. His exasperated wife stood rocking the baby, completely unaware of what her husband was about to do, until he ripped the child from her breast. The man stormed out of the house and headed towards the cliff face, the baby precariously hanging from his grasp. His wife pleaded and sobbed, trying to knock some sense into the man, but he wouldn't listen. Without hesitation, he threw his own child into a pit. The woman still heard crying, a miracle, so she took decisive action. She grabbed some rope and began the descent into the pit. Unfortunately, before the woman could reach the bottom, her husband took an ax to the rope and left her broken body at the bottom to rot. Locals say their desperate cries can still be heard to this day. Further tragedies occurred following the construction of the Tilly Willie Bridge on Ghost Mountain. Experts claim that this haunted bridge is not actually a bridge at all. It was initially intended to be a dam, but many used it for crossing due to its convenient location. Unfortunately for these unsuspecting travelers, the Tilly Willie Bridge is no stranger to taking victims. It was the 1970s. With her children in the back seat, a woman unfortunately skidded off the bridge, killing her and her children. Many report that they have seen the ghostly headlights of her car in the distance when driving down this road. Additionally, a young student attending the University of Arkansas also fell from the side and was unable to free herself from her car as the water flooded in. After she drowned, the bridge was demolished in 2010 and a proper one was built in place of the dam. Despite this new construction, locals still claim that the ghosts of Tilly Willie's Bridge continue to roam Ghost Mountain. Located in central Arkansas, Highway 365 is a lonely stretch of road punctuated by only a few houses and dense woodlands. This might sound like the perfect location for a relaxing Sunday drive. However, if local reports are to be believed, this is anything but true. Taking Highway 365's scenic route could allegedly end in an encounter with a supernatural apparition. Called the Vanishing Hitchhiker by locals, this ghost is usually reported to assume the form of a young girl in a tattered white gown. She extends her thumb to passing vehicles, waiting patiently for one to stop. If the girl's able to flag a car successfully, she gets in and provides them with an address that isn't too far away. One local man recounted the events that ensued after he had picked up the vanishing hitchhiker on a rainy night. She stumbled into the passenger seat of his car, her torn dress soaked. Her teeth chattered and her shoulders shook as shivers ran through her body. The man took off his raincoat and gave it to the girl, hoping it would help her warm up. Her home was close by, so they didn't engage in small talk beyond the usual pleasantries. Though the man did wonder what had led her to be standing on the side of the highway in ripped clothing at such a late hour, but they arrived too quickly for him to voice this sentiment. Still shivering and tightly gripping the man's jacket wrapped around her, the girl did not immediately exit the car. Instead, she stared at the house through the passenger window with an indiscernible look. After a moment had passed, the man decided to walk around and open the girl's door. When he did so, he was shocked to see that it was empty. He placed his open palm on the passenger seat and felt that it was dry and undisturbed, 
despite her soaked gown. Bewildered, the man went to knock on the door. He thought maybe she'd somehow slipped by him, but an older woman answered and quickly quelled any logical excuses for how the girl had disappeared. She said to him without urgency, That young girl is my daughter who was killed years ago. She hitchhikes back home once a year. In disbelief, the man requested evidence. He could not believe that he had just encountered a ghost. The woman told him to go to the graveyard if he wanted proof and told him where her daughter's tombstone was located. He got into the car and sped off towards the cemetery, locating the girl's tombstone with ease, since it had his jacket draped over it, as if protecting it from the rain. This local man's account of the vanishing hitchhiker is undoubtedly fantastical, but numerous other individuals claim to have experienced similar encounters. What's most interesting about this haunting is that it's not limited to Highway 365. Many other dark and desolate stretches of road possess equitable urban myths involving a hitchhiker who doesn't remain in the car for the duration of the trip. In the small town of Falk, Arkansas, reports of a rampaging hairy man have been circulating since 1834. While the source of these sightings has never been officially identified, locals believe that the responsible culprit is a cryptid dubbed as the Boggy Creek Monster. This creature's description resembles that of Bigfoot, weighing in at an estimated 300 pounds and standing somewhere between 7 and 8 feet tall. The entirety of its body is covered in coarse hair, typically described as either dark brown or black. While sightings of this creature date back to the early 1800s, it was not until the 1990s, when settlements expanded into natural territory, that this creature's existence became particularly prevalent. One local couple claimed to have had a terrifying encounter with the monster in 1971. The couple was relaxing in the safety of their home, when a hairy arm tore through the screen of the window that the wife, Elizabeth Ford, was lounging beside. It fled before causing any grievous harm, leaving the couple to believe that they were secure but it returned briefly after midnight to attack the husband, Bobby Ford. He was rushed to the hospital after being thrown to the ground and treated for mild shock. While the creature left no biological evidence, scratches were prevalent along Ford's home, and three-toed footprints were left in the mud. This event became the basis for the movie, The Legend of Boggy Creek. Reported sightings of the creature did not stop after the Bobby Ford incident. In 1997 alone, over 40 individuals reported that they had seen this creature lurking in the area surrounding Falk. Based on its activities, some believe that the Boggy Creek monster is primarily nocturnal, preferring to do most of its hunting in the cover of night. But this is not proven. At the Sulphur River Wildlife Area, neighboring Falk, a hunter reported that he had seen the creature moving about in broad daylight. While the Boggy Creek Monster has been cited by a multitude of individuals, culminating in solid evidence for its alleged existence, some experts believe that there may be another explanation for these widespread reports of a supposedly elusive cryptid. Arkansas possesses a myriad of flora and fauna, especially in small towns such as Falk, surrounded by nature. This presence of wildlife has led some to believe that there's actually no such thing as a Boggy Creek monster. They contend that all alleged sightings are misidentified reports of black bears. Black bears predominantly move on all fours, but these animals will sometimes rear up onto their hind legs to establish dominance by making themselves appear more prominent. They can reach up to six feet tall and weigh over 400 pounds. On top of this, they are covered in thick black fur. These similarities between the reported descriptions of the Boggy Creek monsters and black bears are impossible to dismiss. It's easy to see how one could make such a mistake, but this explanation still needs to address some issues. Bears have unique paw prints, denoted by a pad and five distinctive claws. The creature that attacked Bobby had only three claws, and its print indicated bipedal movement. This is currently the strongest piece of evidence in favor of the Boggy Creek Monster's existence. 